That inverse relationship between translation degradation has suggested a competition between translation factors and translation repression factors, or P-body mRNPs. And that the function of the mRNA in the cell really then reflects how the mRNA is partitioned between translation and repression. Okay? And I want to emphasize this because in the past we've tended to think about whether an RNA can translate or not really as a function of how well it interacted with initiation factors. But what we've learned now is that, in fact, there's so, a competing so-called repression complex, which then uh, can also drive the RNA into a repressed state, which then can assemble into these larger aggregates that we can even see uh, in the microscope. And that the function of an mRNA then is really, in some sense, perhaps dictated by its distribution between these two different competing uh, assembly pathways. So a, a key point that led to this kind of model is has come from an examination of these the proteins that are involved in triggering mRNA decapping and P-body formation uh, as studied in yeast. And what we know about those proteins is that their orthologs in other cells are required for the translation and repression of specific mRNAs. So for example, a protein called DHH1, which is involved in promoting decapping in yeast, we know that in uh, many maternal mRNAs is required for the storage of those mRNAs, their translation and repression and storage. And we also know that in neurons, where many mRNAs are stored, some of those mRNAs, their uh, storage and their uh, preventing them from entering translation requires this ME, the DHH1 protein ortholog. So that, um, so this repression decay complex is not just for driving RNAs into decapping, it's also for maintaining some mRNAs in a translation in a repressed state. And consistent with that, we know that some of these activators can actually be purified now and be shown to directly repress translation uh, in cell-free extracts uh, all by themselves and can, in some cases, even bind to and inhibit directly the action of some of these uh, translation initiation factors. So the bigger point, then, is, of course, that these translation repression complexes play a role in translation repression of RNAs as well as targeting them for degradation. Now, I've already told you that localization of mRNAs requires them to be translationally repressed. So now we've described a complex which is involved generally in translation repression. Might it also have a role in RNA localization? And in general, we don't really know the answer to that question, but there are hints that it will. And I want to highlight that by showing this uh, experiment done in Drosophila embryos, where a DCP1, which is a subunit of the decapping enzyme, is actually required for the Oscar mRNA to be localized to the posterior pole of Drosophila embryos. So this is Drosophila embryo here uh, growing. And you can see this green here is the Oscar mRNA that's localized to this region of the cell. Now if we mutate the component of this decapping enzyme, you can see the RNA no longer localizes to the proper region. So this suggests that these components of this translation repression complex not only can affect decapping as well as translational control, but at least in some cases they might even be involved in repressing the translation of mRNAs so they can be properly localized. 